guys, Brandon here. Um, I'm on the way to Costco and um, I've been wanting to do a video about uh, Tesla Semi and my predictions or really guesses, I guess, for what the features will be. Um, the unveil event was supposed to be on October 26th, um, but Tesla uh, notified us this week that they're postponing this. Well, actually, everybody was notified. I think Musk tweeted it. Um, but anyway, uh, and they're doing that not because of Tesla, I mean, uh, semi-related um, troubles or anything like that. They're doing that to devote resources elsewhere, such as um, the uh, Puerto Rico um, battery and solar efforts and that kind of thing. So anyway, the next, uh, the new scheduled date is November uh, 16th. Um, so that's nice because it means that I don't have to take a red-eye fly back, red-eye flight back. Um, it also gives me a little more time to do this video. So um, I'm not a truck driver, <laughs> so it's kind of weird that I would be doing these kind of predictions anyway. Uh, but it's kind of fun just to think about what they might be doing, how they, you know, how maybe they're uh, going to be integrating the their version of a semi into the um, heavy hauling world. Um, there's a ton of semis out there on the road hauling stuff to and fro. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this changes up. So first, just on a global sense, um, I think the, you know, that it's going to be a, you know, everything that a semi normally would do. I mean, it hauls uh, a huge amount of um, cargo weight. I think it's going to have full capabilities for whatever the um, uh, diesel Class 8 ones have right now. Um, you know, it'll be able to pull the biggest and the heaviest trailer and, um, you know, all that, all that kind of stuff that goes with it. Um, but where it comes down to differences, um, are kind of like in every area, every, uh, other segment that they've, um, electrified, I guess. Um, so let's see. First thing, I guess I'll talk about, um, aerodynamics. Uh, I think the vehicle is going to be extremely aerodynamic for its class segment. Right now, semi-tractors uh, are extremely un-aerodynamic. Uh, I was reading actually a recent article, research article about um, uh, tractor-trailer aerodynamics and ways to improve them, improve them with structural add-ons and stuff. And the average drag coefficient for uh, these giant trucks ranges from like 0.5. Uh, to um, 0.9 or something. And for comparison, the Model S uh, drag coefficient is 0.24, uh, which is definitely on the low side, but still, you can get an idea of um, the kind of thing that, you know, that, the difference between those. And that's important because, especially as, as you get higher, um, higher speeds, in the equation actually for drag, uh, not, not drag coefficient, but for the, the total drag on a vehicle, it actually increases with the square of the velocity. So that means that speed has um, a, it's a non-linear effect when it increases, like it's even, it's even more significant. And you know, on, on interstates and stuff, tractor trailers are traveling you know, there's areas where they're going like 80 miles an hour and stuff. And even in my Tesla, when I go 80, 85, for example, some of the Nevada interstates have really high speed limits. And you can go 85. Um, I mean, even on a very aerodynamic sedan like the Model S, that takes a toll on um, on on the battery. So it, it, it takes more energy per mile than it would at, say, 60 miles per hour. And biggest reason for that is uh, is, is air is, is what you're because the vehicle is plowing through air and the slower you do that the less the air has an effect so anyway I think that's gonna be drastically lower we've already seen um, there's a picture floating around on the internet right now that might be the Tesla semi it certainly looks what I could conceive of being it and it, it basically it doesn't really have a nose it just kind of comes down as an angle uh, which is probably about as efficient as you can get it without having some sort of active air displacement thing in the front. In other words, something that would suck air from the front and shoot it around the vehicle. Um, 
So I think I think the coefficient for its segment is going to at least um, at least half. Um, that's how big it's going to be. So there's that. Um, what else? Um, hardware for full autonomy is just a given. I, it's going to have all the cameras um, and radar necessary for that. Um, I also think it will have some pretty sweet uh, parking abilities, um, which many truckers are amazing at the uh, parking and turning maneuvers that they can do. And uh, I think some of that's going to be built into the um, whatever autopilot software Tesla includes with um, with the semis. Um, I also think it's going to have um, so it's going to have a. Uh, well, of course there's the driving area, but then there's also like the um, convenience area, I forget what you call it, like the cab area behind where uh, the driver can sleep and stuff. And I think it's gonna have all those, all those amenities. Now in terms of battery, um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure where they're gonna go in this because it depends on the kind of infrastructure that they have. So, but I think at least for version one semi, I think there's gonna be I think it's going to be a 400 uh, kilowatt hour battery um, and that will give it a rated range of about uh, 500 miles so I think the vehicle is probably going to use um, up to one uh, kilowatt hour per mile um, but not always so I think the um, you know the estimated mileage is always higher so I think I think it's going to be estimated at 500, but the real world is going to be closer to 350, 400 miles, which means that a trucker could drive for, um, well, what is that? I don't know, at least four or five hours, maybe more. Can't really do the math in my head right now uh, without stopping, which is pretty important for the way these guys um, and gals drive. Uh, they often do really long routes, and you know, honestly, they're not always stopping like every couple hours. They go pretty far, and I think if if you have to stop, um, like just in my own experience driving across the U.S., if you have to stop like every um, hour and a half, which I do on on my vehicle, and most of the superchargers are like 90 to 100 miles apart. That's that's about an hour and a half of driving, and then you have to stop. And they say it's only 15 minutes, but it's actually longer. Um, so it, it's more like 20 minutes to 30 minutes. So if you're trying to, you know, if you're driving across the U.S. with a large uh, trailer stuff you're not going to want to stop every hour and a half for like 20 or 30 minutes and they're going to be need to charge more uh, because they have such large batteries so that might make it even take even longer but to solve that I think well let me take care of my recycling first and then I'll get to that um, to solve the problem of needing more energy and as a result possibly taking uh, longer to charge. I think um, there will be multiple supercharging units, uh, which will be um, next gen ultra fast charging uh, compatible. So um, I think probably what they'll do it, at least in this variation of the Tesla Semi, maybe there'll be a version two, I don't know. But um, I think they'll have probably like three or four ports to to chart um, to plug in separately so instead of just uh, charging from one plug it'll charge from multiple um, it'll charge multiple areas of the battery um, simultaneously or multiple battery units I'm not really sure but um, anyway so that's that's one thing the second the second thing which I don't know if they would actually do is um, bring back the battery swap program uh, which kind of makes sense in the commercial arena because um, you know, the speed that you can deliver things uh, relates to, uh, you know, profitability and stuff like that. So you just, you want to get that stuff back on the road and and uh, covering miles. And if you have a little bit of extra expense uh, for having a feature like battery swap, it, it might make sense. But the problem is um, building those facilities, um, well, first of all, there are none that will take a semi truck. So they'd have to build all of them. and they're much more expensive than, say, um, uh, you know, the supercharger uh, superchargers right now. It's basically all there. All the superchargers are right now is um, electrical equipment, um, 
like each little stand and a parking lot, which oftentimes the parking lot is already there. So I think Elon Musk uh, or somebody has said that, you know, the installation cost for those is like, I don't know, one hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand dollars, which is really small in the grand scheme of things. But um, to put in, you know, thousands of uh, battery swap centers uh, to facilitate Tesla semis uh, carrying freight all over the U.S. would be huge. Not that they couldn't do it but it's just a huge endeavor that would come out of the bottom line that they're convincing these uh, shipping companies um, that they can you know, save so much money. And it's gonna cost a lot more for this whole new electric um, transportation system if they do something like that. Um, so that's why I think, at least for version one, um, they, because uh, I think they're planning on making these in like 2019 or something, which is only two years away. Um, so they would have to devote a ton of resources to building swap stations if that was the route that they were going in the near term. So, and but I, I also think they're going to be building separate um, charging stations for the semis because there's no way you can put semis at the current uh, Tesla chargers, and they'd be like taking a ton more uh, electricity, and you could only put one there. Like you, if you've ever been to a, a truck stop or something, there's you know, there can be 50 to 100 uh, trucks in some of these uh, areas. So um, to some degree, there will be some uh, infrastructure building regardless. Uh, so that's my take on it. I think I think the battery is gonna be, I, I thought maybe they were gonna do 300 kilowatt hours, but it just sounds too small to me. And um, I, think, I think a 400 kilowatt hour battery gives it the range that will convince skeptical truckers or uh, companies because, again, you don't want to be stopping that that often. Even at 400 kilowatt hours and definitely at 300 kilowatt hours, there will be increased time for shipping routes because you do have to stop a little bit more. Sorry, just got a phone call. Um, even if they do the smaller ones or, or the 400, there's still going to be uh, some added delay. Um, but that will be offset by the incredible amount of savings not using diesel fuel as well as uh, less maintenance costs for the trucks. Um, but when, when they are autonomous, which, and I think the hardware will be standard, but again, they, you know, they have to develop the software and stuff. But once they're autonomous, even, even if, the, if the rig has to stop like every two hours to charge, it will actually be faster than a human because it can drive it can, it can stay on duty like 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I don't think there are any trips that are actually that long, but because you can get across the US in that faster than that. Well, I guess if you're going north and south, like transcontinent or um, uh, international. But anyway, so it will rival basically like a two person um, shipping system where one person drives, one person sleeps, and then you switch every 12 hours or something. It will rival that system, but it will have none of the expense of drivers so bummer for drivers here uh, but I don't I don't think that will actually come to fruition because for a while um, probably at least two to three years I would think because uh, that that you know the liability for um, autonomously driving vehicles of that size with such destructive power is quite high and I mean we don't even have um, we don't even have level four driving for, or level three really, for um, for the current Teslas, even though they've had the hardware for over a year now. So anyway, I think that's going to be a while uh, before that happens. I'm just saying that when it does, they're going to have the the argument like, oh, well, it takes a little bit more time to ship electrically or with electric uh, vehicle transportation. Even that argument will go away once once it becomes autonomous and you know charges stops and charges by itself and all that kind of stuff. Another thing is, I think there's going to be some interesting changes to the cooling systems. I think they might actually have three different systems, uh, and the reason I think that is because um, the regen systems and the batteries uh, create quite a bit of heat, even when you're towing, like with the Model X and stuff. Um, and if you can just imagine, I mean, if if a Model X generates a lot of heat, imagine if you're um, towing tens of thousands of pounds, you know, up a mountainous route, you know, 
the semis have to be able to do that. Um, and then also when they're going down the hill, that's a lot of uh, potential energy that is being recaptured by regen. That's going to generate a lot of heat too. So I think there's going to be a, a separate cooling system for the cabin, a separate cooling system for the um, like the driving component hardware, like the regen um, regen components um, and and that kind of stuff, and then a separate system for the battery um, to maintain temperature because I mean there's going to be so much power going out of and going back into the system um, it's going to be really crazy and one of the ways they'll be able to diffuse that heat actually is I think there's probably going to be uh, four to six motors um, probably every wheel will have its own and that way you can use uh, smaller motors which um, each by themselves will generate less heat uh, and then and then you won't have so much cooling demands. But you also have to consider that these rigs are going to be driving in very cold areas too. Um, so there's going to be, you know, the converse is you have to be able to keep all these components uh, heated to stay at the optimal um, performance uh, state, like the battery. Um, I guess region, the actual components of the region doesn't matter. It's the battery that needs to be able to receive um, additional energy. Oh, which actually reminds me, um, so another reason to have the battery uh, size a lot bigger than what is actually needed technically for, uh, for the range is that once, if you have to fill your battery to the top every time, um, it, it really slows down. So you want to, you know, you want to have to charge like 70% or less, but also if you leave with a full charge or above 90, 95% uh, charge, um, and you're doing a lot of braking, or say you're going downhill, there's no way to capture that regen. It's just wasted energy because the battery's already full. Um, so you want to avoid that situation uh, as well. So, um, I don't know, maybe they'll be able to uh, keep everything cool with just two independent systems, um, but I can just imagine, you know, because I've, I've driven over several mountain ranges, and those, um, those grades are pretty steep, and um, it's... You know, a semi can can burn out its brakes if it if it only relies on brakes going through some of these steep grades with a full load. So if there's that much energy being recaptured by the regen motors, um, you don't want the system to diminish that because of uh, because they're getting too hot or something, and it's not able to keep up with the thermodynamics going on. Because uh, one, that's going to shift the work to the brakes, which means you're going to be wearing down components of your truck more. Because you know there's no gears that you can downshift. Um, and two, that that actually could be dangerous um, if you rely too much on the brakes. And um, the other thing is, if you're not getting that that regen back, then uh, you're going to be losing out on um, on time because you're going to have to charge more. So, yeah. Um, so there's a lot of reasons to uh, have a beefed up uh, AC or at least thermodynamic managing system in the new one. Um, that's all I can think of in terms of now, uh, in terms of um, features that I've thought about. There might be another one or two, but I, I don't remember it. So, um, but anyway, those are my thoughts. Uh, we'll find out on November 16th. I'm planning on um, going there, so that should be fun. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.